Meet these incredible apes who just beat the Ender Dragon using custom touch controls I coded and a ton of behind the scenes training. This is the story of how we use the skills of coding Minecraft mods and building maps to get actual apes to beat Minecraft, revealing the incredible journey that brought these bonobos into the gaming spotlight. We'll explore touch controls I coded, the training map that was developed specifically for the bonobos and everything in between. Future me here, leave a comment about what video I should do next. The full videos about the apes themselves and their story of beating the Ender Dragon are on Chris Cow's channel. Part 2 just dropped. If you haven't already watched those videos, go check them out and come back to get the full context. Link in the description. The videos were made in collaboration with the non-profit Ape Initiative, who is also worth checking out and supporting. When I was first asked to make the mods, there was only 6 days until the first play session with Kanzi. The goal would be to develop a totally new system that would allow the apes to use just their touchscreens to control the game. The first thing I tackled was coding the touch controls for the bonobos, the main part. The idea is to split the screen into different locations that the bonobos can click on to move their heads. Tapping up looks up, tapping right looks right, etc. Since touchscreen on Windows is actually just a glorified mouse, all I need to do is allow mouse clicks into the active game window. You know how when you play Minecraft your cursor disappears and you can't move it? Yeah, we don't want that. So after using Mixin to modify Minecraft's mouse handler class, I snipped that feature right out the game. Now the cursor can be moved wherever you want. After a bit of tinkering to prevent this from happening, I'd immediately reached another small problem. I couldn't even turn my head. After touching up on a bit of trigonometry, I added the touch zones where each part of the screen made the camera move in a certain direction when tapped. Here's an old version of this before we decided on the zone system. It was pretty bad. Now last time I checked, apes aren't a big fan of WASD keyboard gaming, so we need to find a way for them to move around. It turns out that Kanzi and his bonobo friends were already familiar with a movement system from playing other research games. While tapping on the side of the screen turns their head, tapping in the centre of the screen makes them walk forward. And with a bit of math, we now have a cool circle, except we want an invisible circle, so bye bye circle. I made it so that clicking on our invisible circle makes the player move forward for X amount of seconds. And with the auto jump turned on, the bonobos now had full control over their movement. For all this game interaction, I made a simple system that would allow me to easily add these touch zones. I dubbed them interaction areas. Upon a Break. press, the root interaction area would loop through all its children and check whether it's inbounds or whether they want to consume Break. the click event, Break. so other clicks don't Break. get processed. There were now only three days before Kanzi would beta test my mod, but at this point there was no way for the bonobos to interact with the world. We wanted to give the apes full control, which included the ability to break and place blocks, fight mobs, and swim in water. The idea would be to use lexigrams as buttons, the little pictures the bonobos used to talk to people that the apes would press. I quickly added the fight, place and swim buttons as their own interaction areas, contained in a row, but the break button posed a challenge. Unlike the other three, it wasn't a quick action that happens once, it has to be held down until the block finishes its animation, so I needed to use Mixin to detect when that was finished. Okay, so there's two different skills Chris and I want Kanzi to learn during this first session. First, we want to teach him how to collect and walk towards items. Me and Chris built this big empty grass area that sort of looks like one of the other research games he plays. If I press this button, a bunch of colored spots pop up, each with either a diamond, emerald, or gold ingot. If Kanzi walks onto an emerald area, he'll get his favorite treat, peanuts. But if he steps on the diamond or gold areas, he'll get a grape or an apple chunk, which he likes but doesn't prefer. Hopefully he'll start to learn that moving towards the green gets him the best food, but we'll have to wait to see. The second skill is using Xander's break button to mine blocks. All I did was replace the colored spots with mineable blocks. We use the same colors to indicate which food he gets in this map too. With the break button complete, I sent off the first version of the mod to Chris and held my breath. At first things were going great. Kanzi, an actual real life ape, was effortlessly playing Minecraft from attempt number one, using both the touch controls I developed and the amazing training map by Spiralia. But when it came to the break maps, Kanzi managed to find some game-breaking bugs. Oh, it turns out apes make great beta break. testers. Oh, In the end though, he was able to successfully break some blocks, but there would need to be some major fixes before the next visit in only 5 days. The pressure was back on. With some notes from Chris, I made slight tweaks to the mod, like only rendering the lexigrams if they were needed. For example, the break button would only show if you were looking at a breakable block in adventure mode, meaning Kanzi would know exactly when to use his buttons. I did this by assigning a predicate to each button. Given a list of parameters about the game, it will emit true or false. If true, it will render. If false, it will not. I also fixed a few bugs that were annoying Kanzi, which wasn't too difficult, like how oh, sometimes buttons just stop working if they got spammed too much, or spamming forward so fast the camera would freak 
leak out from the sprinting animation. I made Minecraft's annoying narrator that you can only ever accidentally turn on come into use as well. I hacked into the narrator's code using Mixin so I could make it say any words on command and attached it to the break buttons so when a button was pressed, the narrator would say what just happened. This way, the bonobos can associate what the researchers and Chris were telling him to do and the buttons they'd already pressed. Subscribe to his Xander. While Xander polished up the mod, me and Chris started working on a set of brand new maps for Kanzi. The first one was very similar to the maps he was already used to, except this time, instead of putting his collection locations wherever, we created a sort of path. The idea was that we could lead Kanzi all over the map if he followed these quote unquote breadcrumbs. I also added some multiplayer functionality so that Kanzi could eventually trick Tommy in it into thinking he was playing with a real person. Next, I upgraded his breaking map. Since the big use of breaking blocks in Minecraft is for mining, we wanted to have Kanzi explore and mine through a cave. The problem is that Minecraft caves are far too random and not big enough for Kanzi to stay entertained for long enough. So we built up a ton of these cubic sections of caves that would fit together like puzzle pieces. The idea was to have the cave randomly generate using these pieces as Kanzi explores. This was by far the most difficult map I've had to make. But after a ton of bug fixing and mind melting testing sessions, it worked. Every time Kanzi would break a wall, he'd get a peanut and a new part of the cave would generate. And finally, we built up a bunch of biome maps that Kanzi would progress through. This would be Kanzi's ultimate challenge as it not only combined all of his skills but also added new ones like lighting nether portals. We also wanted to recreate this awesome Minecraft meme, but for real. This is difficult because Kanzi had no idea he needed to look down. He just follows the breadcrumbs. So I added a secret command block that would force his camera down and push him a little towards the center. This ended up bugging out the first time Kanzi tried it, but we got there in the end. He eventually made it to the end portal where I coded in an animation that would dramatically light the portal once he got close. Now, video 1 was a success, but Candy would need lots more training and help to be the final boss of Minecraft, the End Dragon. On top of knowing how to navigate a Minecraft world, they would need to learn how to eat, shoot End Crystals, attack the Dragon, and even water clutch. push it clutch. But we knew that this task would be a lot for just Candy to take on. Enter Tico, Candy's nephew, who would help him in the intense battle of the final boss of Minecraft. Tico may not be as well trained as Candy in the art of Minecraft gaming, but he would work hard at training for his spotlight. Getting literal apes to fight a whole dragon would not be easy. More coding of the mods would be required. For this to happen, the two bonobos would need to start training, and unlike the first video, we were given 10 whole sessions with the apes instead of just the four. All of these would be online, which means that we could work with the bonobos away from ape initiative. The first task was to improve Kanzi's navigation and teach Tico the basics. Since we were training them to navigate through the end, I made a bunch of small end parts with different obstacles. The goal was for the bonobos to search for and collect items on the ground, which would simulate searching for their items when they died. The maps had the bonobos going upstairs, looking around pillars, and even starting underground. This turned out to be super easy for the apes to learn, and after a couple sessions, they were masters of collecting items. But to train them to be the dragon, we'd also have to make maps to teach them to shoot crystals, and of course, shoot the dragon itself. And there was a lot to do on the mod side as well, because there was going to be two bonobos playing together and had to rework the mod on servers. This makes things significantly harder, because the Minecraft client barely knows anything about the world. This is because when playing on single player, the client creates an integrated server to host a world, so the game has access to the server stuff and the client stuff at once. First, the bonobos should manage their own hunger, so I worked on adding an eat lexagram that would find the best food in the inventory and eat it. This introduced a new challenge, automating complex series of events. I set up a system so it could easily create tasks. For example, the eating task consists of finding the best food, swap to that slot, and eating it. This way, I could code other series of actions relatively quickly. I also made a button flash depending on how low on hunger and health the bonobo was, so it was clearer to them when they needed to press it. Also, a red flashing vignette was added whenever anyone took damage. This made it very clear that something was going wrong. This is tricky to add since the client is never actually told about when the player gets damaged. It just gets told the health has changed. So using mixing, I had to check the player's health every tick and compare it to last tick. If it went down, I triggered the vignette. If you watched the part 1 of Chris's videos, you might have noticed that Kanzi got pictures of peanuts or check marks on his screen. This was coded right into the data pack with custom item models in the offhand. This time around, it will be modded. I created a slash indicate command for Spiralia to use in his data pack to make certain icons appear on a specific Bonobo screen. I even made it spin and zoom just like the old Batman logo. 
With the indicate command, I had check marks pop up whenever a bonobo would complete a task successfully, and a big red X when they would die or run out of time. This is important because unlike video 1, the bonobos are actually able to die now, and they need to learn to avoid that. The next large feature I implemented for the mod is the touch entity system. Candy and Tico would need to be able to shoot the dragon and crystals just by tapping on their screens, and my mod should recognize what entity was pressed and trigger one of those tasks I made earlier. Somehow, the math in this actually ended up going into the fourth dimension, but with a bit of perseverance, I got it working. I projected a ray from the camera into the game's projection matrix to convert the screen coordinates into world coordinates. This gave me the position of the entity that was tapped. Once a crystal was tapped, the task would go like this. Smoothly look at the crystal, shoot, turn back. This worked to some degree. The problem was looking directly into the crystal soul isn't how you aim properly. I need to add proper arrow trajectory prediction. Because I'm not a mega maths nerd, I had no idea how to do this. With the aim code taken from a hack client, following open source licenses of course, I now had 100% reliable arrow aiming. I applied this same logic to tapping on the dragon too, so the bonobos could shoot the dragon. This would be the way they would kill the dragon. With the crystal and dragon shooting implemented into the mod, it was time to see how Kanzi would do. Using a similar design to the item pickup map Kanzi and Tico were training on, I made some new ones and added end crystals at the top. We realized that Kanzi and Tico wouldn't know exactly where to shoot, especially if the crystals were high up and blocked by the pillar, so we decided to add some green particles around them. Immediately when Kanzi saw the particles, he clicked on them and blew up the crystals, and within the first session, he already mastered the skill. There were some points where the crystals were too high up to shoot however, so Xander increased the hitbox and size of the end crystals. Unlike Kanzi, Tico wouldn't need to shoot the crystals during the fight, instead, he'll be focused on fighting the dragon. I created 4 more training maps, and used armor stands moving in a circle to act as a fake dragon path. To make the dragon harder to hit, I added a couple of these paths and had the dragon randomly switch between them. At first, Tico had no idea what to do. Up to now, everything the bonobos have interacted with has either been glowing green or spinning around on the ground. The dragon was a boring black blob, so Tico just walked around confused. To entice him to hit him, we used the same strategy with the end crystals and added some green particles. Tico immediately figured it out and was now hitting the dragon consistently. But obviously, having a bunch of green particles was pretty ugly for the final fight. So we slowly lowered the amount of particles until eventually, Tico learned to hit the dragon entirely without them. After observing a few training sessions, there are only a couple of changes required before preparing for the final fight, which was just in 8 days. First, I would increase the amount of touch zones from 4 to 8, having diagonal zones in all the corners to move, for example, down and left at the same time. Bonobo's priorities in the wild aren't exactly managing their inventory either, so you might need to be able to help them out with that. I did auto inventory sorting to keep things organised. To do this, I would loop through each slot in the inventory. If it was a slot dedicated to a certain item type, and there was an item in there that wasn't supposed to be, my mod would move it out. If it was some other slot but had a dedicated slot it should be in, it would move that item into the correct slot. This was also difficult to pull off on the client because the server doesn't trust it with its own inventory. It had to simulate the types of clicks you do whilst in an inventory screen. In hindsight, I could have just implemented this server side. I don't know about you guys, but as a child, I was taught that sharing is caring. Chris came up with the great idea that Tika should be able to share his food sure. and arrows when Kanzi gets low. How cute. With the usual routine, I added a lexagram to the top of the screen and attached a task to it. This time, it would make Tico turn to look at Kanzi, drop some arrows, drop some food, and throw a splash potion of healing. Tico really was brought up well. When coding, I made this crazy bug where the player sure. would do 360 no-scope spin drops of the items and potions. That wasn't even fixed until a few days before the final fight. Would you believe the final test before the real fight didn't even involve Kanzi or Tico? We used live human test subjects to act as if they were bonobos and tried to beat the end dragon with my touch controls. That led us to the discovery that the dragon loves to launch people high into the sky whenever it feels like it. Introducing the water bucket clutch, clutch. option, my favourite feature of the whole mod. After detecting that a bonobo had been falling for more than 5 blocks, the clutch button would appear. Upon pressing, the most MLG clutch ever known to man would be executed right in front of your eyes. If one of the bonobos actually used this button, the clip would be insane. We'll have to see. It might be hard to believe, but after watching the training sessions, we realised that the dragon fight really was boring. 99% of the time, the dragon didn't even do anything, it just flew circles in the sky. This resulted in the bonobos just staring at the sky the whole time and tapping on the dragon. Whilst the test fight was still happening, I quickly coded up a whole new command, slash dragon control. This featured many subcommands including perch, which caused the dragon to come to the middle, charge, which initiated a charge at one of the players, causing him to get launched into the air, 
Target, which would put the dragon into its fireball stage, circling around players, occasionally shooting fireballs, and fireball, which would eject a fireball from the dragon's mouth and head directly towards the player if the commander executes his wishes. With this done, Spiralio could control the dragon mid-fight to make the fight a little, okay, maybe a lot more interesting. Since I wouldn't be playing with the bonobos, my job during the final fight was to make sure that everything would go smoothly, and that the dragon was working properly. Worryingly, the day right before the final fight, we realized that the dragon was super glitchy. It would randomly decide to freeze and stop attacking players, seemingly completely arbitrarily. So I added one final feature to the dragon control command, reset, which would completely reset the end fight, respawn the dragon to full health, etc, in case of the need of a restart. It was time. The culmination of months of coding, testing and refining had led us to this moment. The bonobos were about to face the ultimate challenge, defeating the end of dragon in Minecraft. The map was ready, the mod was ready, and with a mixture of excitement and curiosity in the discord, Chris and Spiralio, other helpers and I eagerly watched as the bonobos started their conquest against the final boss of Minecraft. The bonobos had no idea how important this moment was for them, they were just having a bit of fun. took the W. Oh my gosh. We just made very history. Good, very good, very Oh good. my god, that was insane. Sick. Look at that. We had a good time. As we witness the incredible feat of the bonobos navigating the pixels of Minecraft, it's clear that this journey was more than just coding and map making. It was a groundbreaking exploration into the intersection of technology and primate cognition. From the initial idea from Chris to two insane videos never done before. There were so many people involved in this production, obviously Xander had a huge role in making this possible, as well as everyone at Ape Initiative and within Chris's team. The touch controls are actually open source and you can download it and try it for yourself, link in the description. This type of video is something I've never done before, so if you enjoyed this video please consider liking and subscribing, leave a comment about what you think the Bonobo should do next. If you want to hear more from me, my Discord server is the best place to be where you can chat to me and see what project I'm working on next, link in the description. Most importantly, consider donating to the Ape Initiative to improve the facilities for the amazing creatures and allow them to do more fun, enriching activities like this for the rest of their lives. You can also get Bonobo Craft merch. All profits go straight to the Ape Initiative, t-shirts are super high quality, and if you get the bundle with both the t-shirt and the signed poster, you get entered into a raffle to get on FaceTime with Kanzi himself. Link in the description.